Hello, everyone. My name is Wendy Beckman, and I'm a registered dietitian with the New York State Office for the Aging and SNAPED New York. Thanks for joining me today on What's Cooking with Wendy. Today, I'm going to be making a squash soup. We'll be posting the link to the recipe in the chat box, and the recipe can also be found on the SNAPED New York website at www.snapedny.org. Now, this is a great recipe because you can use any kind of winter squash that you want to make it. Winter squash includes things like acorn, butternut, crookneck squash, and even pumpkin. But just be aware that if you want to use pumpkin to make this soup, just make sure that you're using edible pumpkins and not ornamental pumpkins. Some pumpkins are good for cooking and baking, and some are only good for carving or decorations, and some are actually good for both. So check with whomever you're purchasing your pumpkins from to make sure that they're all edible. There are several different kinds of edible pumpkins and not all of them are orange on the outside. Some of them are sort of a blue or a green color and some of them are even white. So check with your local seller and you can bake the pumpkin in the oven just like you would with any other squash before you use it. Now before we get into the recipe, let's look at my plate. So this recipe covers the fruits and vegetables section of my plate. You want to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables at each meal. My plate is a graphic representation of what our plate should look like every time we sit down to eat. But don't forget to also vary your protein routine, make half of your grains whole grains, and switch to low-fat dairy. Remember that everything you eat and drink over time matters. You'll want to find your healthy eating style and maintain it for a lifetime. The right mix can help you be healthier now and in the future. Most Americans don't eat enough fruits and vegetables every day, so you know that I'd love to share with you ideas on how to eat more vegetables and fruit. This recipe is a great way to make half your plate fruits and vegetables. So let's start making the soup. You wanna to remember to wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds before you start cooking or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Gotta make sure we rub that all in. So let's look at the ingredients for the recipe. This recipe makes six servings, and here I've cut the recipe in half. Now, before we talk about the rest of the ingredients, I have one half tablespoon of olive oil, and I'm gonna put that in the warm pan. And I also have one clove of garlic, that's minced. I'm gonna put that in there. I have one onion that has been diced, chopped very fine into small pieces. And I have one carrot that is minced as well. We're gonna put all of those in there and stir them up because they have to cook for a little while before we start adding the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that some of those get sort of soft before we start cooking them. Um, I did cut up these uh, vegetables sort of small. Um, the other ingredients that we have here are, I have a half a cup of tomato puree, and I have two cups of vegetable broth. You can also use chicken broth, um, and you wanna look for the low sodium options at your grocery store. And I have two cups of cooked winter squash. I have three quarters of a tablespoon of basil and three quarters of a tablespoon of oregano. And of course you can add more or less to those things as you like. I'm gonna turn up the heat on this a little bit to try and get this to cook a little bit more. So these vegetables have to cook for about five minutes covered and you can stir them every once in a while before you add the rest of the ingredients. Now the recipe calls for cooked squash. You can cook the squash ahead of time and that's gonna save you some time when you're ready to make your soup. I think the, this recipe could also work in a crock pot. You can brown the onions and carrots and garlic before you add them to the crock pot, sort of like I'm doing right now, and then add the uncooked squash, the seasoning, the vegetable or chicken stock, and let that cook on low for six to eight hours in the crock pot. And I think that that would be enough time for the squash to cook. I love to use my crock pot, especially when it starts getting cooler outside and we know that autumn is just around the corner. Love to use that crock pot put everything in there in the morning, and then when I'm ready for dinner at night, it's ready to go. Now, I chose to cook my squash ahead of time, and I cut it, I cooked it by putting it in the oven and roasting it. I cut it into cubes. 
in the oven. I roasted it for about 40 minutes at 400 degrees. Now, before I cut it into cubes, I did have to peel it first. So I washed the squash under some running water and then I peeled it with a vegetable peeler. The outside skin is not super hard, not like something like a spaghetti squash, that's really hard. So the vegetable peeler worked really well to remove the skin. Then I chopped the squash into cubes and I roasted it on a cookie sheet. If cutting is difficult for you, you can cook the squash in the microwave for eight to 10 minutes. Now, depending on your microwave, you might have to cook the squash for either longer or shorter, depending on the size and the wattage of your microwave. You can cut the squash in half and remove the seeds before microwaving it, or you can microwave it whole by putting it in a little bit of water and then putting it in the microwave. I do like to poke some holes in the skin to let some of the steam out when I'm cooking it that way. And if you are gonna cook it in the microwave, you just wanna make sure that you check on it frequently to make sure that it hasn't overcooked. In addition, you wanna make sure that you let it cool completely before you attempt to remove the seeds or before you chop it up and then put it into your soup. Or if you decide that you wanna roast it in the oven after that to give it a little bit more flavor, you can do that as well. Let me put some more of the ingredients in here because I think that some of this is starting to cook down a little bit more. I can smell those onions and that garlic cooking. So here is the half of a cup of tomato puree. Here is the two cups of vegetable stock. You can use a little bit more than that if you like. I'm gonna put in the oregano and then I'm gonna put in the basil and then I'm going to put in the cooked squash. All right, and that looks pretty good. That's looking really good. And I can smell those onions and garlic cooking and it really smells delicious. So since the squash was pre-cooked, I would simmer this covered for about 30 minutes before serving and sort of let all of those flavors mix together. You wanna to sort of bring it to a simmer. So I'm actually gonna turn it up a little bit because some of the uh, ingredients were more room temperature. We wanna heat them up and then you can cover it and then let it sit for a little, while, a little while. But you can see that it really comes together pretty quickly. That's basically it. I cooked some ahead of time so that you could see what it looks like. So, oh, I'm gonna lose my chop there. So this is the squash after it's been cooked. And hopefully you can see it's a nice orange color. You have the carrots and the onions in there and the butternut squash. And it actually smells really good. Mine thickened up quite a bit. So it actually reminds me a little bit more of a stew than a soup. But if you add extra broth, you know, you're gonna certainly get more of a soup sort of a texture there. So now I know that you've heard me say before that all forms of fruits and vegetables count. Fresh, frozen, canned, and dried can all be used to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. And with this recipe, I used a fresh butternut squash, but you can use it, probably use the frozen butternut squash as well. I've actually used that in several dishes before and it's much easier, there's no chopping involved. You could probably also use canned pumpkin to make this soup as well but just be aware that it's probably gonna come out with a little bit more of a creamy texture since the canned pumpkin is already pureed and the butternut squash is sort of in chunks. So it comes out a little chunkier. So do you have any ideas on what kind of squash that you would like to use? If so, type your suggestions into the chat box and let us know which kind of winter squash is your favorite and what you think you'd like to use in this soup. So I hope that this recipe gave you some more ideas on how to incorporate more vegetables into your diet. Don't forget to, meet, to join me on the next month when I share more tips on how to save time, save money, and eat healthy. In September, I'll be making a recipe to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. I'll be back with another edition of What's Cooking with Wendy on Friday, September 24th at 11.30 a.m. right here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page. This presentation was funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe out there.